Sup everyone, Logan Dunning, logandunning.com. So I wanted to show you guys an interesting way to schedule a .NET Core or .NET 7, essentially, console app in Windows. I'm sure there's similar schedulers on Linux and Mac. Um, I also wanna caution you guys on, this is probably not the best way to do it because they do have a scheduled or Windows background service type um, you know, templates for C sharp, which will actually register it as a service and it's more resilient. That's kind of, you know, those background service uh, s services is kind of where you want to go for this. This is kind of just a, you know, a one off. If you, if you had an existing console app and you wanted to just schedule it, um, this is a quick and dirty way of doing it. So yeah, I got a, right now I got a .NET 7 uh, template here, you know, just the one that you don't have the um, the main method. It just have a con, con, you know builder to get the config file. Um, you know, I'm kind of putting the ASP.NET Core environment variable in app settings JSON just so I could get access to words like production, test, staging, whatever. Um, and this I'm not using. I kept it in there. It's just like a way that if you wanted to store your secrets, here's like a little um, little helpful utility for Azure Key Vault. So basically, um, what I want to show you here, I'm just going to comment at this and show you what you know this thing currently does. It's kind of looped in a try catch there, and it will just essentially, you know, it'll wait 300 milliseconds, complete, and then wait three seconds and then close. And this is the main kind of meat of how you actually talk back properly to the Windows task scheduler is you do environment exit zero. And, you know, that's probably not intuitive unless you kind of chat GPT it or, you know, stack overflow it. Um, but zero means success. Now, let's say you did have a, you know, a weird exception. Um, then you want to throw, sorry, you want to exit with anything that is not um, a one. Uh, it could be a meaningful message like, you know, you know, three means this or whatever it is. But here, that's, uh, well, that's odd. Something went wrong. All right. So basically, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just show you, um, you know, how you would actually schedule that. So we'll take that out and we're going to right click on, um, just go here and I'm going to go to publish. Okay, now that I'm in the publish area, I'm going to go to, yeah, so just publish it right to the bin. And then if you show all settings, I like to do the self-contained option um, because when it does bundle it all into and the produce single file, because it'll take all of the DLLs and the runtime and SDK parts that you need um, and put it all in one file. So when you actually drop that exe on, let's say a computer, like a Linux computer or anything, um, in this case it's Windows, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I install .NET 7 or 6 or whatever it is, right? It's kind of just easy to manage that way. Even though it says single file, it does produce three, but um, I believe you only really need the one, especially for a Windows task um, scheduler. So I'm gonna say save and I'm gonna publish. And, and at the bottom there, it's gonna like say, you know, build started, and then it's successfully published. And so for your convenience, I've kind of dragged these, you know, four different files. Like normally you just have these three, but because I added in an app settings.json file for config, I have the four, but you normally get these. This is the exe. Um, and all you have to do is you hit start on your computer, and then type in S C H and that should be enough to pull up the task scheduler. And then in the task scheduler right here, um, you can go to the library and there's some ones that, you know, you know, uh, software throws in there, but we're going to say, create a, uh, t create task. And what I'm going to do is, you can say that, okay, uh, run whether the user is, if you're putting it on a server, you definitely want to like say, you know, you know, when the user is logged in or not, and you definitely want to use some kind of a, you know, a non expiring admin password, because if you're subject to like, um, Azure active directory or active directory, um, you know, password, like 
uh, revolution policies, like where it revolves around like three months, um, then, you know, these things will stop working over time. So you want to do it with a service account, not your like, you know, local account. In this case, this is just my local machine. So I'm going to use that just for the demo. I'm going to say run with highest privileges because why not? Um, you know, generally there could be times when you don't want to run that. I have no idea. Um, but in this case, I want it to run with as much admin power as it could. So I'm going to just say, you know, uh, schedule uh, dot net seven console app. Okay, that's the name of it. And I'm going to say triggers and the trigger is going to be, um, actually this is where you can add a schedule. Like if you wanted to say daily and then repeat every one days and then, you know, do the task every hour and then, you know, repeat every hour, but then only for let's say 12 hours. So it's just like during business hours. I'm not gonna do that now for triggers. I'm just gonna say actions and I'm gonna say new. We're gonna say start a program. I'm gonna hit the desktop and I'm going to hit that exe file. And um, you could essentially like put in a start in, which for me, I won't. And then I'm gonna go over to conditions. Um, you know, you can actually wake up the computer to run this task if it's at a certain you know, time or whatever. Um, and you could say, you know, only when the computer's idle, if it's like a remote desktop computer where it's like sharing multiple sessions with multiple users, you might not want to affect anybody else that's on there. Um, you know, this is a good idea if you're kind of like trying to say that um, only when a certain like, um, not VNet, but uh, VPN or, you know, not on Wi-Fi, only on LAN kind of thing, um, you would pick that one and then allow the task to be run on demand. Generally, it doesn't hurt enabling this because that's what I'm going to do now. And then, you know, if the this is these are all defaults, so stop the task if it runs longer than three days, probably a good thing. I'll probably say like, I don't know, an hour like mine doesn't really run that long. And so if the task is not scheduled again, delete it after whatever, you know, that's a lazy way, whatever, I'll, I'll delete my own stuff. But now it's going to prompt for a password. And if you get the password wrong, I believe it won't let you pass that, it, but it doesn't say anything like, oh, you got the password right. We've scheduled your task, right? So this one we called, um, I think it's under S right here, this one. Okay. So if we just get rid of this action pane, get rid of that, make it super small, get rid of this a bit. Um, okay. So you'll see last run, never, um, the last result. Um, oh, sorry, this is last run results, right? So that hasn't been run. And if we look at the actual history, it's disabled for whatever reason, maybe because I haven't run it, but let's just go ahead and give it a run. Yeah, so I realized why it wasn't working for me. It's like that generic Logan account is not the same exact one when it binds to Azure Active Directory. So the password wasn't correct. So that's good to know, right? Because um, whether it's right or it's not, it won't tell you. So now I have it running under the administrator account, right? And I'm just going to hit refresh on this guy. It's normally it runs right away, but it doesn't really like live update refresh, right? It's only kind of when you go in it. So if we go back here, find out wherever the heck that thing is, which is here. So it says ready. And the last result was here, which is zero. So when you see zero, you know that it ran properly. I also enabled history. And you can do that I think in Windows 11, you know, surprisingly, you know, normally for me, I guess maybe it's on the server level that it's enabled by default. But if you wanna enable the history tab, if it says disabled here, you just right click and say, enable all task history. Um, so basically you have, you know, any information as it came in when it was, you know, running. Um, I think there's a way that you can actually write to this area here, um, like right into the, let me see if I can make this bigger at all. Um, you know, so it's kind of going through this. Um, yeah, so it ran an instance with return code zero and all that stuff. And then essentially if you were to, you know, have that exit code of, 
let's say three or two or anything other than zero, it won't say success, right? Because this is, this is considered a success, right? And I think it does say it somewhere in the history um, where it ran successfully. Um, if you write, um, let's just see if it says it here, uh, successfully completed task, successfully, but if you ran and it said one or an error code or whatnot, um, that would just basically not be successful and all that. But yeah, that's pr pr pretty much a way you can like, you know, a quick and dirty way of like scheduling your .NET 7, 8, 9, whatever it is by the time, you know, stuff's out or anything really that you want run in Windows with the tasks scheduler. And like I said, there's better ways to do that, like in services where instead of being in the task scheduler, it'll be in, you know, Windows services and those are more resilient and they kind of run on, they kind of have their, Honestly, it, it's like, you know how you can set a schedule here for running a program where the Windows background service is like, you kind of set the schedule within the program, which is nice because you don't want to rely too much on the operating system as a whole to like do some config stuff. You kind of just want to kind of drop it in and let the service handle the rest. You know, hopefully you could add some re resiliency, like if the service is down, it'll auto restart up to a max three tries, which you can do in Windows services. But yeah, anyhow, I thought you guys would like that quick look at what you have to do, quick and dirty way to schedule your .NET 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever it is by the time you end up watching this video um, with Windows uh, Task Scheduler. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.